the time where we take the communion, where we take a special time to remember the uh, death uh, res and resurrection of Jesus Christ and his time on the cross. And today uh, we have the incredible Fang Ha, who is going to share uh, her thoughts uh, on the cross about this time. Uh, mother of one, soon to be mother of two. Uh, and if you don't know Fung, she's just recently come here in the last few weeks from Australia uh, to help uh, her husband Aaron and with Scotty and Jenna to lead our church here. And she has asked me to read a passage in the Bible first, which is probably familiar to most of you. Psalms 23 verses 1 to 4. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I wa walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Oh. Thank you, Papa Yin, for uh, sharing the scripture for me. I appreciate that. Good morning, family! Yeah. Woo! My name is Fang. It's a privilege for me to share what does the cross means to me at this stage of my life. And the cross means to me love and hope at this moment of my life. I really love the scripture that Papa Yin shared with, for me. <laughs> I like to call him Papa Yin. <laughs> um, it is so true that the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Every time when I'm in the darkest valley, God is always there to comfort me, to love, to love me, to give me hope. So I would love to share a little bit, a little bit of my background. So I was born and raised up in Guangzhou, China. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which is um, two hours away from two hours two hours away north from Hong Kong, and I become a Christian. In, on the 10th of September 2017 in Boston, America, which I almost become a Christian for six years now, which is so awesome. I'm so grateful for what God has done in my life. It sounds a little bit dramatic at the beginning, but this is a true story. So when I was born, I was abandoned by my parents. So um, I was the third kid in in, in my family at the time that China has one child policy. So if um, they want to keep me, you know, they will face very serious consequences. So my mom and dad, they actually decided to put me in a basket and on the side of the river and get rid of me when I was just born. So that really stuck in my head sometimes, you know. I, but later on, lucky enough that God changed their mind, they, they hide me in a little village so I can grow up. And, um, you know, that's the reason why right now my real birthday and my passport's birthday is not the same. Oh, confession! <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know, because of this, it really does something into my heart that, wow, I'm a bending kid. You know, the society doesn't want me. My parents, they don't want me. And so my heart, it's always long for love and belonging. So I study really, really hard to please my parents. I study really hard to make people around me happy because they, that's what they want from me. And then so at the age of 22, I have the opportunity to go to America to study and work. And by God's grace, I actually get into one of the best universities in the entire world, which is Harvard University. So I study my master's degree there in digital media design. It was so awesome there. When I was there, my, my family was so proud of me. They support me in every way they could. And also, I, I enjoy studying Harvard as well. It seems like it's everybody's dream. I feel extremely smart when I study there. And also, I just, um, it was a great time. But also, 
but deep down in my heart that I know that I struggle so hard because it was very stressful and competitive environment. I was dreaming about, like I was alone by myself in America. I was dreaming I can finish my degree and get a job or husband there to fulfill my, my American dream. <laughs> But I know that at the time, my heart was super, super empty. I, I look very, you know, beautiful and shiny outside, but my heart is very lonely and empty. I did not see any hope, and I always question my, my purpose in life and what's the meaning in life. But lucky enough, God heard my cry after a year just, you know, sitting around and um, just being wild. On the third day that I moved to Boston um, in America, um, I saw some people actually, they were doing Bible preachings on the street. And um, God already planted seeds in my heart that I want to seek Him. I want to have a relationship with Him. So I, I walked up um, to the crowd and talked to a girl, hey, like, I'm looking forward to be a relationship with God. How can I know God more? Can you please give me more information? So um, the American girl actually, um, she did Bible studies with me. After a month, I get to know more about the Bible. I got to know more about God, and I become a Christian. I got baptized. Wow. So, which is super awesome. And since then, I become a Christian. And then, um, you know, uh, later on, God called me to be in the full-time ministry. That's the reason why my husband and I right now that we're in the full-time ministry. And it was so awesome that just after eight months being a baby Christian, God called me in the full-time ministry, moved from America to Australia. On the way, I was able to meet my husband right now, just like Papa In shared that I'm about to be mother of two. <laughs> and uh, it's so awesome. I'm so, so, so grateful for God that he gives me so much love and so much hope because I know that, you know, if I stay where I'm at, just chasing after my personal lives, and I will be still in darkness. And I know that the darkness that I'm in, I'm not alone. There's lots of Chinese people or people in all nations, you know, looks good outside, but it's deep down in heart. It's very empty. It's very lonely. It's chasing after something. And um, I know that there's nothing else can fulfill us not money, not career, not relationship, but a, re but a relationship with God could help us. So I'm so grateful for God that he died on the cross for us. He was the one that been nailing on the cross. He was the one that who got bitten. And then so my sins could be forgiving and everyone else's sins could be forgiving. So thank you so much for letting me share. I pray that today that you can drink communion time. You can reflect to yourself, you know, what does the cross means to you? And uh, thank you for letting me share. Come on.